Howdy campers, welcome to your 11th Angular 2 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about property binding. Alright then, so what is property binding? Well, property binding lets us bind data or expressions to HTML properties and that could either be on a native HTML property such as the value attribute on an input field and that could be set equal to an expression which evaluates to a string or it could be on a built-in Angular directive such as ng class or it could be on a custom made property such as this example right here and don't worry about these bottom two for now we're going to talk about those in later tutorials in this one I just want to concentrate on this native HTML property data binding all right then, so I'm here in the home component template and down here at the bottom I've created two input fields, one with an attribute of value and one with one of required. And normally in HTML we'd just write a string in here, right? We'd say something like, I love chicken. Okay, and then if we save that and output it to a browser then this is going to appear in that input box, right? But what if we want this data here, this value, to be dynamic? Well, we can bind data to it by just popping these square brackets around the value property right there. This is data binding on the property. So now we could set this equal to some kind of data that we've defined in this component. For example, this, I've created this variable right here called my string and I've set it equal to I like chicken. Okay, so I've defined that on this class, this component class. So if I grab this now, this variable is available to us over here and we can bind it to this property. So I can output it like that, press save, and if we view this in a browser right now, and I refresh, then it should show up in this input field right here. And there we go, I like chicken. So it's not outputting my string, which it would do if we take away these square brackets, but instead, it's now outputting I like chicken. And that's because we added those square brackets, and now this is binding data to this property. It sees this as the value on the home component right here, okay? So let's try something else. Let's try this, required. And we need to give this an expression right here that evaluates to either true or false, or a variable which is equal to either true or false. So again, you can see on this home component, I've got a variable called my boolean, and that's set equal to true. So let's go over here and output my boolean and save this dude and let's watch it update over here or rather just refresh. Okay, and although we don't see anything changing in this box right here, let's inspect the element and we can see that required equals true. Okay, it's required. Now, if I change this to false over here and save it, then let's see what happens in the code. All right, and let's inspect the element, and this now should no longer be required. You see required equals false. So that's pretty cool. We are binding data to these properties by using these square brackets. Now there is another way we can bind data to them, and that is by taking away these square brackets and instead using string interpolation. So right now if I saved it, then this value right here is gonna be, I like, uh, sorry, my string, that will appear in here. And then this thing right here probably won't work at all. So let's just take a look. Okay, so we see my string there. And then if we inspect this, probably nothing is going to happen. Yeah, required equals my boolean. That doesn't really make sense. Okay, but what we can do without the square brackets on is use string interpolation in here. And that is also going to bind this data to that property. Much like we've seen in the previous tutorial, when we use these double curly braces, it's going to output the data from this component class instead of what's inside it. So let's save that now. Okay, cool, now we get I like chicken back and if we inspect this one more time then we should see that this is false again, required equals false, which is what it is on the component class right here. Pretty cool, right? 